in, according to Marx, those with capital have power. Well, you, the pension funds, have the capital, but I hate to tell you, ain't got the power. The power lies with Wall Street and investment managers and investment bankers. They own you, they control you, they, you are price takers, not price makers. They determine the conditions. If you don't like them, they walk away because there's always someone else. Uh, the markets don't function because of so much short-termism, which means that capital is not being allocated effectively to good long-term investments that haven't been recognised. It's being allocated to the companies that are hot and they tend to collapse after a while and all pension funds are involved in that in some way. It's a very difficult thing to control. But to, in order to control it, you have, first of all have to have the will to recognise that this system that we're operating in is not operating to the best ability, to its best ability or for the real interests of the final beneficiaries. It is operating in the interest of Wall Street. And by Wall Street, I mean the service providers, managers, uh, City of London, all of those. Uh, to get control of that requires collective action. So again, it sounds Marxist. Marx was a great sociologist. He understood the nature of power. Econ economists don't even talk in terms of power. This should be a power struggle. When Lehman's went under, this I was at a conference and I stood up in front of the conference of pension funds and I said, this is our opportunity. This is when the enemy is weak and you have to recognise who the enemy is. The enemy is weakened now. They won't be weak for long because they come back and they bounce back very strongly. This is the time we should go away and write a manifesto of what pension funds demand from the capital markets. And everyone was silent and I went to a couple of public sector funds and I said, so what about it? And they said, we are public sector funds, we can't get involved in politics. Well, let me t tell you, Wall Street doesn't have any problems getting involved in politics. As Simon Johnson, a professor at uh, MIT said, uh, the, the US government, Washington, is the best government money can buy and Wall Street bought it. And they still own it, they still control it. To give you a couple of instances, we, the pension funds, have allowed the bankers in the city of London to determine what is the risk-free rate, LIBOR. We allowed that to happen. And now there's a stink because now we know they were doing something rotten with it. Is that a surprise to anyone? It's just a surprise that took us so long. They control it. The Volcker Act in the US, which tried to separate retail banks from investment banks, has now been watered down so far by the lobbyists in Congress that Paul Volcker himself says he doesn't understand it. It's now 400 pages long. No one will understand it. And that's a classic way of destroying something by obfuscation. Just make it so confusing no one can understand it. So how do you see then the long-term investing? The long-term has some real problems with it. It's not easy to define, it's not easy to get to, and it can be abused. The classic way in which it's abused in every organisation I've ever seen is you make a decision, you implement something, it's not working, someone will say, yeah, but it'll be okay in the long term. And that can be used to justify anything and everything. At one stage uh, in the 1980s, Exxon was loaded with cash, dangerous position for anyone to be in because they'll waste it. And somebody had the great idea, we've got to diversify, they bought themselves a circus. And this was Exxon buying a circus. Why? Diversification. Oh, that sounds pretty good. And it was a failure and it took them a long, long time because in the long term it will work out. So there are subtleties about the long term. It is not easy to get to and it's not a land of milk and honey once you're there. Uh, the thing that really makes it worse is people with their Blackberries and iPhones. If you're looking at something every day, you are going to make decisions about it and you're going to do something. And long, a lot of long-term investing requires you to don't just do something, sit there. And that is a very, very hard thing to do. We want to be active. And that activity destroys value. The great investors, Warren Buffett says, most of the time I sit on Mars. And he does. But he's not just sitting there, he's thinking. And you go into any investment shop 
and people are busy and busyness is the enemy of long-term thinking.